market failure, and negative externalities. Market failure, once again, is when the free market fails to provide a product at the socially efficient level, what society would like. And uh, the example we're going to talk about now are negative externalities. There are negative side effects that are suffered by society when a product is consumed or produced. So if I consume a product or I produce a product, but society bears a bad side effect, it's a negative externality. The side effect is external to the my initial consumption or production of a product. And that happens with demerit goods. Demerit goods, by definition, are goods and services that have negative externalities that are overproduced and or overconsumed. So the free market is giving us too much of these goods that have negative side effects, and we call that a market failure because the free market is failing society. Whenever we look at market failure, we want to acknowledge the socially efficient level. The most important thing here is Q star. It's how much of the product we would like. That is determined by marginal social benefit and marginal social costs. That is how much society benefits from an individual product and how much society pays to have an individual product. And that determines Q star, how much of the product society actually would like to have. So let's start by looking at negative externalities of consumption. Negative externalities of consumption is when society suffers negative side effects when a product is consumed. So bad side effects coming from the use of a product. And two examples are cigarettes and drugs. Cigarettes have a negative externality of consumption because bystanders can suffer from secondhand smoke when the cigarettes are consumed. So there is a perfect example of externality. Someone who is outside of the consumption, someone who isn't smoking a cigarette, still suffers a side effect, so a negative externality. Drugs are a good example too. A negative externality of consumption, when people consume drugs, they are enjoying the drug apparently, but society is going to be harmed because those people may behave inappropriately. And so society has a negative externality, a negative effect on uh, society. So to diagram them, we start with this socially efficient level. And we show that the personal benefit of products, such as, we'll use the cigarette example, is greater than society's benefit. The individual wants cigarettes more than society would like there to be cigarettes. And so you can see the quantity, the actual equilibrium quantity Q, is greater than Q star. Q star is the ideal, but we're getting more of the cigarettes than society would like because individuals perceive there to be a benefit from the cigarette. And that wedge represents welfare loss, how much society is losing because individuals perceive there to be a benefit that society does not enjoy. Society actually gets the negative of the cigarette. So that's welfare loss, how much society is losing out. How do we minimize that welfare loss? How do we deter the consumption of demerit goods? Well, the first thing we can do is use a tax. And a tax will, of course, increase the price and make the product less appealing. The problem with the tax is it's going to disrupt certain markets. Let's use the cigarette example. If we tax cigarettes, then cigarette firms will be dis uh, disrupted. It'll be more challenging for them to sell their products. They may lay people off. And a politician who comes from a location where there's a cigarette uh, production plant in their uh, jurisdiction, they're not going to want to be the ones to tax cigarettes and cause unemployment uh, among their constituents. So. That can be challenged with tax, but again, that's the whole point of the tax, is to deter a product that has a negative side effect. So we start with our negative externality of consumption diagram, and we add a tax line to the marginal social cost curve, because that's really a supply curve. We only add taxes and subsidies to the supply side. And look at the price going up to P1. We would imagine that taxes would raise the price, but more importantly, look at the quantity. Quantity is decreasing from Q to Q1, closer to Q star. So society is getting closer to the ideal, less of the demerit good, closer to the ideal because of the tax. And look at the wedge. The wedge is going from that blue wedge to the smaller green wedge. So welfare loss is being minimized. Welfare loss is going down. And in fact, if you look at that MSC tax line and you kept shifting it left, that wedge would get smaller and smaller. The welfare loss would get smaller and smaller, but that also means that you're using a heavier and heavier tax, and we just discussed the problems with that. Another option is to advertise, and the hope is that successful advertising will make people realize that consuming the product is bad for them, maybe 
convince them that it's bad for society, but that's not going to get people to change their habits. So you need to somehow get people to deter their consumption however you can. The problem with advertising is it's costly and it may not work. It's hard to change people's habits, but let's look at what it would be diagrammatically. We start with our market failure diagram and successful advertising would make the marginal personal benefit. People would realize that goods like cigarettes and drugs are not good for them and their personal benefit would go closer to society's benefit. And look at the new equilibrium. It goes from Q to Q1. Again, we see a reduction in the consumption of the product closer to Q star and the welfare loss wedge gets smaller, meaning that society is going to have less negative side effects, less welfare le loss as the product is consumed less. So successful advertising can do this, but the challenge is, of course, successful advertising and paying for it when you're not sure if it's going to work. And I think those cigarette ad campaigns in real life are a good example of government trying to correct that market failure by trying to deter people by making them consider their personal benefit. Another way to get rid of the negative externality of consumption is through a law. And uh, this is, you don't really show it on a diagram, you just explain it. And so you can make a law that says no cigarettes, or you can reduce cigarette consumption by increasing the minimum age or preventing it from being consumed in certain places. Um, we've seen a lot of that with cigarettes, such a good example for this economic case. But um, the challenge with a law is always determining what type of law is appropriate. You don't want to infringe on people's liberty. You have to think, is it practical to enforce this law? So those are things that a government needs to consider. So you have taxes, advertising, and laws are all different options for deterring negative externalities of consumption. Now let's look at the production side. Society suffers negative side effects when a product is produced. That's called the negative externality of production. A bad side effect coming from the production of a good. And pollution is definitely the best example of this. Um, anytime that firms create a product and in the process they pollute, that's a negative externality of production. So one example were some electronic companies in China that when they produced the product, they polluted the local river. So that product in its production had a negative side effect for society. To illustrate that, we start with our socially efficient level diagram. And we show that for the firms, the personal cost to producing products that have negative side effects is not so much as society's perceived cost. And so the personal cost, we shifted to the right. Firms are more willing to supply products that have negative externalities than society would like them to be supplied. So we shift MPC, or we don't shift it, but we draw it to the right of MSC. And we see that the quantity of these products is overproduced more than Q star. So we're getting more of the product than is socially ideal. And once again, we have a welfare loss wedge. Remember that the wedges always point towards the initial equilibrium. It's why I recommend you start with MSC, MSB, P star, and Q star. You always start with the social, socially efficient level. And that wedge points to the initial equilibrium. And the base of it is created by the initial Q line. You kind of have to extend that line in this case. I'll show you again. Here is the MPC to the right of MSC. And I draw that line up to determine where the welfare loss wedge is, how much society is losing in instances where pollution occurs in the production of certain products. So how do I prevent that? The first thing I can do is tax production. Going back to my example of firms that polluted while creating electronics in China, I could tax those firms, but the reality is firms are just going to pass the tax on the consumers, or maybe they're going to lay off some of their workers because they need to find other ways to make up the the cost of the tax, um, but that's the whole point again with the tax is you're trying to get less of the product. It is unfortunate that it can have other economic consequences, but if that negative side effect is too great, this might be your, one of your options. And so you can see what does the tax look like? Look at that MPC curve. I shift it to the left to MPC tax. I create a new equilibrium where MPC tax meets marginal social benefit. And notice that Q moves left to Q1 closer to Q star, I'm getting closer to the social ideal, and look at my welfare loss wedge, it gets smaller, it goes from the blue wedge to the smaller green wedge, so the welfare loss is minimized through the tax. Also notice that price goes from P to P1, 
uh, in the process, taxes will always increase price. Another option is to simply make a law that says don't pollute. Another one that's going to be challenging, maybe you have a law that says you can only pollute so much. Um, determining what laws are appropriate is tricky. It goes back to that situation I said earlier about negative externalities and consumption. You know, if you have a major power plant that is known to pollute in your district and you're a representative to uh, people who work in that power plant, you may not want to put a regulation on that power plant even though it's polluting because the jobs that power plant creates is more important for your constituents. Plus, are you going to be able to easily enforce the law? That can be very challenging. One other thing you can use is a cap and trade scheme. Um, it's kind of similar to a tax. Cap and trade is where you allow firms to pollute a certain amount, maybe 100 metric tons. If one plant produces only 90 metric tons of CO2 and pollutes less than the cap of 100, then another firm that pollutes 110 metric tons can buy the right to pollute over the cap from the other firm that polluted less. The problem with that is it only works is if over time you slowly reduce those caps more and more so that firms have to become more and more efficient. Otherwise, you're just displacing the pollution. So another interesting thing to consider. In any case, when you correct a market failure, you need to remember these steps. And this is important for analyzing a market failure question. First, you need to see, um, or if you're a government, you need to determine whether you should act and if you are going to act, how much you should act. Should you put a tax on the product? If so, how heavy of a tax? Should you make a law against the product? If so, how strict a law? Should you advertise against the consumption of the product? If so, what type of advertising and how much are you willing to spend? Each of those actions come with costs. We talk about how taxes can lead to unemployment because firms may just choose to fire workers. Advertising can be costly and laws can be difficult to pass. So the government needs to weigh those costs against the potential benefits that society would enjoy, or in this case, the potential harm that could be prevented to society. And so once again, when you're talking about market failure, you need to remember it's free market failure. You could allow the free market to continue. And over time, let's look at cigarettes again, that, that really good example of negative externality of consumption. Over time, in the past few decades, people have moved away from cigarettes because not only is there a negative impact on society and there have been good laws and there have been good advertising, but people also realize that the negatives it could have on themselves were not worth it and so it's moved personal benefit to the left. So arguably, the free market has kind of adjusted itself, but maybe not. Maybe it was due to those advertisements and high taxes and laws restricting use. It's hard to say if this type of market failure, cigarette consumption, would have corrected without government intervention. So when you have a market failure, the government has to look at it, determine if society wants the problem to be fixed or if the side effects are something that can be dealt with, and then it needs to determine how to act and how severely to act. That wraps up market failure specifically with a focus on negative externalities.